Hi, it's Dwyer. <clears throat> Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Benningangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. In fact, let's talk Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now in boxing, every once in a while, things just come together. A fighter arrives on the scene and he galvanizes public opinion. Right? People want to see him fight. He's exciting. And of course there is a venue where people flock. Right? It's more than an event. A culture is actually born. Well, you have that in the United Kingdom right now with Anthony Joshua. Right? You have an unbeaten heavyweight champion. You have a United Kingdom thirsty for a successor to Lennox Lewis. You have Joshua actually taking on and beating Vladimir Klitschko, right? For a long time, the gold standard at heavyweight, long time reigning heavyweight champion. And you also had him beating an unbeaten, then reigning rival heavyweight champion in Joseph Parker. Right? You even had Joshua beating another Olympic gold medalist in Alexander Povetkin. Well, in Texas right now, things are starting to come together. Right? Things are building. It's not quite to the point that it is in the UK with Joshua, right? Joshua's clearing more than 70,000 fans. But things are building with Errol Spence. Right, fighting in Jerry Jones's stadium. Right, both Jones and Spence have a lot in common. Right, they both love Texas. I need for people to think about the state of Texas when they think about Errol Spence. Understand, Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia for a welterweight fight. Let's face it, things are always bigger for heavyweights. But for a welterweight fight, these guys just pulled in a crowd of more than 47,000 people. Right, this was the kind of fight where people were buzzing about what happened after it happened. Right, it's become really part of the folklore. Spence comes in, he calls himself the truth, he has the word truth on his trunks, he then puts on a show. As the fight was happening, people were astonished on Twitter by how it was going. You had some hardcore boxing fans on Twitter. Rosie Perez, the actress, was on Twitter scoring the fight or commenting on the fight. And she was just beside herself late in the fight. Concerned about the health of Mikey Garcia. Concerned about the punches Garcia was taking from Errol Spence. Now I'm just telling you, Errol Spence at this point could fight my next door neighbor's next fight. And he would pull 30,000 paying fans. And I'm not even sure if my next door neighbor can box. So there is a fight that needs to be made right now. And let me say this. I understand everyone has choices. I know Errol Spence could fight one of many fighters to enhance his legacy right now. I know the opponent I'm going to suggest here could fight one of many fighters and continue his Hall of Fame career. Right, but the time is now for this fight. I don't want them to blow it like it's been blown at heavyweight, where had Joshua fought Deontay Wilder, both men would be bigger today. Right, and I'm talking about a fight a year ago. 
Both men would be bigger today. The money, the money at heavyweight would be much bigger. Joshua wouldn't be trying to make a name for himself in the United States. He wouldn't have to leave his home country. People would be coming to him. That's if he won. If he lost, you would have Deontay Wilder with a bunch of power. <clears throat> and depending on whether there was a rematch clause with a venue provision, right? People would still be buzzing because Wilder would have the credibility of having beaten Joshua who had risen to the ranks as the box office champion at heavyweight. Now those men couldn't work out the details. I understand there are many of you who feel that Wilder shouldn't have gotten 50% and stuff like that. Just understand what was lost. In the door walks Tyson Fury. Right? A guy who, keep in mind, when the Wilder Joshua fight was being discussed, Tyson Fury was fighting guys in witness protection. The fights Fury had, the two fights he had leading up to his fight against Wilder, you know, couldn't be confused with the Joshua events that were happening at the time. But because. Joshua didn't make some concessions to Wilder. This is my point of view, right? Because there wasn't bigger thinking. The idea that, wow, a legacy fight now will lift all boats. A rising tide lifts all boats. It would lift my stature more than anything else if I won the fight. It would lift the heavyweight division past the point where it is now. Instead, Joshua didn't fight Wilder. Fury shows up, exposes Wilder. A lot of fans who wouldn't have dreamt of not being fixated on heavyweight title fights in the United Kingdom. A bunch of fans who thought, wow, the best heavyweight is either Joshua or Wilder. Now suddenly saw Fury and thought, hey, I'm leaving the party with him. You know, this is the guy who has the power. Other people thought so too. Fury got the multi-million dollar deal on ESPN. The heavyweight division now is fragmented. Fury won't fight Wilder right away. Right? Wilder should view that as a compliment. He wanted to fight Joshua. Joshua didn't want to fight him at that time. Right? The negotiations weren't 50-50-ish. He gives Fury an opportunity. Fight ends in a draw. I thought Wilder lost, but the fight ends in a draw. And now Fury's saying, hey, I don't want to fight you right away. Now, watching this from the welterweight division, watching this from a thousand feet away, Errol Spence, I hope, understands who he is and understands the opportunity he has. Folks, the crowd he drew against Mikey Garcia was historical. You don't have a lot of welterweight fights that have more than 45,000 people in the arena. Richard Schaefer during the week, one of the promoters, talked about how they had already sold more than 30,000 seats and people didn't believe him. They kept going past 40. They kept going past 45. Right, Spence needs to realize that he just beat, just shut out on the judges' scorecards. Shut out a Hall of Fame fighter. People view him in a division that has other big names. 
People view spans as the litmus test. Now, if I'm Errol Spence, I don't make the mistake Anthony Joshua's making. By the way, I do think Joshua beats Gerald Miller. <coughs> but if I'm Errol Spence, I realize that with all the big pe business people around me, I'm actually the boss. I'd look around. I'd remember the 47,000 fans who just saw me. And I would tell Al Heyman, Al, my next fight is going to be at Jerry Jones's place again I would tell Jerry look I know you got the NFL going on I know you got a lot of other tenants right rodeo shows and all this other stuff but wow you just saw me bring more than 45,000 people into your arena and I'd like to fight here again and if Jerry says to him well look I'm more than willing to have you, but you know, in Texas, we do everything bigger. Your next opponent's going to have to be big. If I'm Errol Spence, I would say, yeah, for my next opponent, I want Manny Pacquiao. The winner of the fight, it's clear. It's going to be us, the boxing fan, for stylistic reasons. Understand Errol Spence dusted off his best Larry Holmes and just pulverized Mikey Garcia with the jab. Just pulverized him. I'm guessing Garcia's face hurts today. Just jabbed him to death. Right? But Mikey's orthodox. Contrary to what I thought going into the fight, I was wrong here. Mikey didn't have the foot speed to get inside on Errol Spence. Now what happens if Errol Spence fights a southpaw? With, really, even at 40, some of the absolute best legs in the business. A southpaw who has fought a lot of great fighters and who has yet to be tamed by a jab in a fight understand even the guys who beat him had to be slick with it right you didn't see Marquez set up a jab and just live behind it didn't happen So understand where the fight goes from good to great is the fact that while Errol Spence can't fight the fight he did against Mikey Garcia, Manny Pacquiao even today has to be haunted <coughs> by the ghost of Jeff Horn, a guy who got him up on the ropes a guy who roughed him up, a guy who was physical with him. And folks, the Jeff Horn style is the prime Errol Spence style. Spence is more skilled than Jeff Horn. But Spence is a guy who when he gets you up on the ropes, as Errol Spence himself says, it's man now, Spence is physically bigger than Pacquiao, right? One of the big questions fans would have early in this fight is which Errol Spence shows up? I'm just telling you, the Errol Spence who jabs Mikey Garcia to death can't show up against Manny Pacquiao. It would have to be the Errol Spence who corners you, who tries to keep you between his shoulders, who's throwing hellacious hooks to the head and the body, the short to mid-range hooker who's trying to walk down the smaller man, right? The catch is going to be, and it's a catch. 
that he'd be dealing with a guy who has, we'll just say, Kell Brook level hand speed. And as I've said, he hasn't dealt with that level of hand speed for his last three fights at least. Right? Lamont Peterson, Carlos Ocampo, Mikey Garcia. Right? So Spence would be dealing with Manny Pacquiao. Hand speed. And I'm just telling you, he had a problem with Kell Brook's hand speed in the early part of that fight. So stylistically and legacy wise and box office wise I just don't know. Especially since Terence Crawford is tied up with Amir Khan. I just don't know of another big time fight at 147 today that would deliver on the level of Errol Spence against Manny Pacquiao. And let's be clear here. Errol Spence is the IBF welterweight world champion. Manny Pacquiao is the WBA welterweight world champion. This would be a unification match. Right? I'm guessing these two guys together draw at least 50,000 paying fans. I'm guessing there were a lot of fans who saw the pay-per-view price on the last Errol Spence fight and they thought, you know what, I that's a little bit heavy. I need to buy my kid a birthday gift. I'm going to stay on the sidelines here. Then they heard how the fight played out. Then they thought to myself, my goodness, I should have bought that fight. Well, when they hear Spence Pacquiao, folks, the fight's going to be bought. Let me also say this too. Pacquiao has some other obligations, right? He's very serious about his public service in the Philippines where he's a member of government. But Pacquiao has said, hey, I could do this fight in July. Now, I know there are going to be some people out there who say, hey, you want to do it around Cinco de Mayo, right? Or, hey, you want to do it around Labor Day. There are certain dates that have a history of big box office events. Folks, don't fool yourself. It's not the date that makes the big box office. It's the event that makes the big box office. If these two guys do it right and fight in early July, especially given that July 4th has a special place in boxing history, right? Just look up July 4th, 1910. I'm not even going to say anything else about it, right? And July 4th has a special place in American history. It's our Independence Day. I'm guessing with all the creativity and imagination that boxing promoters have, they would find a way to make that a complete box office bonanza. Right? So I hope the two guys get together. Let me just say, who I pick in the fight would depend heavily on the odds. But I do believe that speed kills. I do believe that Pacquiao is a guy who now understands he can't be around the ropes. Right? And I still have concerns about what happens if Errol Spence is forced onto his back foot. Right? Garcia really isn't able to do it. Right? We've seen other fighters who are great on their front foot. Think Mike Tyson. Suddenly get tilted backwards and fall apart against Buster Douglas. Right? Or against Evander Holyfield. Right? Manny Pacquiao is the kind of guy who is so sudden. Right? He is so sudden 
that he can get bigger men on their back feet. Let's also remember too, Pacquiao has a history of beating bigger men. Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya. Pacquiao, Antonio Margarito. Right, the Margarito fight is interesting too because Margarito himself was very effective on his front foot. Pacquiao stands him up. Margarito had to focus on trying to block Pacquiao's shots. That's the fight that gives Margarito the eye injury that I don't think he's ever recovered from. Let me also say too to the gamblers looking for prices you're not going to get a better price on an Errol Spence opponent than you are right now. Right? Spence has just destroyed shut out out boxed a future boxing hall of famer who entered the ring unbeaten right fans remember what they saw in the last fight they don't think completely about the history that Pacquiao Lucas Matisse fight oh that was a long time ago some fans are gonna hear the dreaded number 40 they're going to say, how could an old guy like Pacquiao compete against Errol Spence? When's the last time you got Manny Pacquiao? At a rate where you were getting significantly better than even money. I believe that's a distinct possibility. If a Spence-Pacquiao fight is announced for the same venue in early July as Spence's last fight against Mikey Garcia. Right? Spence proved me wrong in that last fight. Let's just say if Spence fights Manny Pacquiao right now, I would be on the Pacquiao side of the ledger unless Vegas were to make Pacquiao a better than a minus 130 favorite. Right? I'm suspecting Pacquiao would be the underdog. And I'm just telling you, Southpaw against Southpaw, Pacquiao great head movement, right? Pacquiao's head's on a swivel. Pacquiao great legs. In other words, you're throwing a jab, Manny can move away, Manny bounces around. Pacquiao sudden to the point where Lucas Matisse looks like he's been hit with a rifle shot. He's that unprepared for it. Blinding hand speed. Blinding hand speed that might have Errol Spence thinking defense more than offense. Right? I think this is one of the best fights that could be made. I hope the powers that be in boxing on all sides of the table, the management side, Al Heyman, who has both. Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao, so there's no reason why this fight couldn't be made. The venue side, Jerry Jones. Look, I was raised in New York City, right? Raised in Queens, went to high school in the Bronx. I remember when Madison Square Garden was the mecca of boxing, right? I know Barclays Center is making their move, right? I used to live in LA. I know Staples Center is making their move. I love to go to Vegas. I know Vegas is a great spot for boxing. Spence against Manny Pacquiao doesn't belong at the T-Mobile Center, which doesn't have the capacity. This fight belongs at Jerry Jones's place. A place that just delivered more than 47,000 fans for Spence's last fight. Right? The Ford Center. In fact, AT&T Stadium. That's where Pacquiao Spence belongs. To Errol Spence, who I believe right now is holding more cards than Manny Pacquiao. I want you to look hard at Anthony Joshua. I want you to look hard at the opportunity Joshua had to fight Wilder. 
when both were hot. When Joshua was pulling in big crowds in the UK. Don't let that opportunity pass for you right now at welterweight. Manny Pacquiao is not going to fight forever. Pacquiao already has another job being a statesman in the Philippines, right? If Pacquiao says he's available to fight you this summer, deliver for your fans. Deliver for yourself financially. Deliver for your legacy. Fight another guy who's a surefire Hall of Famer, right? All man he has to do to get in the Hall is quit and then wait the waiting period. Pacquiao's clearly a first ballot Hall of Famer. Right? Fight him right now while you have the momentum. Make it happen. You're at the top of your game. Your last performance was a masterpiece. Parlay that into another big fight against a living legend. Right? This is not to suggest that Sean Porter or Keith Thurman aren't excellent fighters. But right now, the fight that would give you the biggest legacy is Manny Pacquiao. He says he's available. You're both affiliated with the same management group. I hope you make it happen. What I don't want to hear months from now is that Spence ends up fighting a welterweight equivalent of Jarrell Miller. Someplace other than a place where he's pulling big crowds. Right? Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to boxing. Fight a legend now in a big box office place. Keep the momentum going. You win that fight. And even critics like me, guys talking about Manny Pacquiao's hand speed and ability to slip a jab, will have to tip their hats to you for beating two Hall of Famers back to back. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.